Good day, my schoolers. This is my school channel, and my name is Abiola. For this video lesson, you are going to join me to tackle the jam CBT past question for the subject biology, the year 2022. So do not go anywhere, stay with us, and we will be right back. Welcome back to my school YouTube channel. For this video lesson, you are going to join me to tackle questions 22 to 42. So let's kick off with question 22. The structure that joins the two strands of a chromosome together is the what? So we are talking about um, the coercive point, you know, for the sister chromatids form, you know, taking a mitosis as the case study. So that particular um, spot, right, or that particular uh, structure will be referred to as a centromer. So the correct option is option C for centrum. 23. When a colorblind woman marries a normal man, right? So what is the probability of their son being colorblind? So when we see a woman who is colorblind, that tells you that the two X chromosomes, you know, they're actually um, carrying the colorblindness traits, right? So uh, that tells you that the woman is not just a carrier. Of course, she is um, fully colorblind. Okay, so then we will now have a normal man. So this is what happens: the child, the the, the boy child, they are going to give back to the son is going to be colorblind because in a man, you know, we have the X and Y cro chromosome for the male. So of course, you know that this thing is actually sex linked, the X chromosome. So even though the traits that is coming to the boy, the chromosome coming to the boy, either it is um, recessive or dominant, it is going to express itself because there is no counter X chromosome in the guy's DNA, you know, to counter that XN that is coming in. So definitely the boy is going to be 100% colorblind. So the correct option is option B. 24. The correct pathway for blood flow from the heart to the tissues of mammals is what? So we are basically looking at um, that vessel that carries blood directly from the heart. You know, that vessel has to be strong. You know, the strength has to be there. So that vessel is your artery. All right, so not all arteries actually carry blood away from the heart. You know, for instance, we have what we call the pulmonary artery that does the opposite of the regular or the common arteries, you know, that we refer to. And of course, we have the pulmonary vein that does exactly opposite what a regular vein should do. You know, vein brings in blood to the heart. All right, so uh, basically now, so I've mentioned that we need a vessel that is strong enough to handle the pressure, you know, from which the blood pumping from the heart you know, it's coming through. So we are looking at the heart at first, you know, the, the correct pathway for blood flow, you know, from the heart. So from the heart, it goes to the artery. Then from the artery to the arteries, you know, and of course, some other vessels have been skipped here. So basically to the tissue. So this is the correct compilation, at least for the context of option um, supply. So option B is the right option. Question 25. Tall trees with buttress roots and evergreen leaves are characteristic features of what? Alright, so basically you are seeing clues, right, um, that we have enough water supply. Okay, so that means that we have adequate rainfall, right? So basically this tells you that um, the trees there will be very big, very huge, and they should have um, buttress roots, you know, to support their weight and the evergreenness of their leaves you know that tells you about a very favorable weather condition so of course that is well attributed to the tropical rain forest so uh, this is doubtless so we have option c as a valid option 26 the genes crossing over or cause doing what so during fertilization we're looking at the fusion you know of the male and the female gametes so typically we are looking at the sperm and the ovum Okay, so mutation, that is the change in the structure of the DNA, right? So uh, mitosis, as we see it right here, you know, we are basically talking about um, that uh, process that is well attributed to growth, you know, uh, basically growth and development. All right, so when we come to meiosis, option D, you know, that is where we can actually find this um, inexpression, so gene crossing over. So this is very, very salient. You know, mitosis, we are looking at somatic cells as well. So the correct option here, yeah, which is very obvious, is option D. Number 27. 
in genetic counseling, a man with hemoglobin formation, we have hemoglobin A, then he has, is most preferred to marry a woman of what? All right, so it is recommended that the man with AS, right, is a carrier, of course. So he should marry a woman, okay, with the genotype AA. Okay, so this is definitely going to uh, prevent um, having children, right, or a child at least that is going to be sickle cell. You know, and we know, of course, about the um, conditions attached with a sickle cell um, child. All right, so it is most preferred. This is because at the end of the day, doing, um, in the course of producing children, you know, the worst case scenario that should happen scientifically or medically is to produce children that as well carriers like himself, right? Not children that fully express the condition. So um, the most preferred or the most recommended way is to marry a woman who is AA. Vice versa, so if the woman is AS, she should go for someone who is AA. So the good um, compilation is in option A. It is very important that you have a jam simulated experience before your coming exam. All you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the MySchool website. Right there you get to download the MySchool mobile app for your Android devices or you download the MySchool software for your laptops and your computers. So let's tackle the next question. So we have an ecological instrument used to measure wind direction is what? Okay, that is your wind V. Okay, wind direction. Your search digs, you know, we use this to measure the turbidity of water. All right, then we have your anemometer. Um, what this actually does, you know, some presentation will tell you wind speed and direction. All right, but some will tell you um, wind speed and pressure. Okay, so the safest option here is that wind vane. Then when you see slope gauge, you know, from the word slope, we are looking at inclination or depression. So definitely the correct option here is option B. Please do not forget to hit that like button. Also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get alerts. Immediately we upload the next video content just for you. Question 29. The growth of mumuko on a piece of bread is what? That is saprophytism, all right? Um, growing on dead or decaying matter, all right? Um, you look at uh, option A, scavenger. You know, you are talking about scavengers, uh, you know, um, um, animals like vulture, okay? Then we have commensalism, we have autotrophism. So autotrophism, you know, you are looking at the concept whereby organisms are able to manufacture their food, you know, by themselves, all right? So the correct option is option D for saprophytism. Question 30. Conversion of atmospheric carbon into chemical bond energy occurs during the process of what? So we are looking at transpiration, basically water loss. All right. Then we have photosynthesis. That process actually occurs during photosynthesis. No, during photosynthesis, we have sunlight as a source of energy. Right. So we have um, the atmospheric carbon, you know, being tapped. Then we have water being tapped from the soil as well. So these two are brought together to actually manufacture food. So that is photosynthesis, right? So earlier I mentioned that uh, in photosynthesis we talk about the light stage and the dark stage. Alright, so when we have um, digestion, for digestion you are looking at where you actually break down, you know, um, food substances in order to absorb nutrients, you know, from it. Then we have respiration. So of course, during respiration we also have the breakdown, you know, of food. Alright, so we talk about uh, metabolic, catabolic, anabolism and what have you. All right, so let's just stay in the context of the question presented to us. So the correct option here is option D for photosynthesis. Because during respiration, plants actually give out carbon dioxide like other living organisms should do, right? So the correct option is option D for photosynthesis. 31. The display of male agama lizard is to do what? So basically when we see display, um, in agama lizard or by agama lizards, okay, so uh, it can serve as um, attracting mates. You know, it's, it's a reproductive behavior, of course. Then, as well, some presentation will tell you that um, it's actually a way to um, weed off intruders. All right, so some will give you that. So uh, we just have to look closely, you know, and use discretion to select the most viable option. So, of course, that is not the way they regulate uh, body temperature. We know that when they want to regulate body temperature, they just come and bask in the sun as cold-blooded animals. So, they do not scare away predictors like that. All right, so give invites to intruders. No, that is completely off. All right, so what they give, basically under this context, um, the invites they give out is actually to 
uh, potential mates, you know, females to actually attract females, you know, for copulation, reproduction purposes. All right, mating basically. So the correct option is option C to attract females for mating. Question 32. The end product of the digestion of carbohydrates is what? All right, so we are looking at simple and um, complex sugar. So the end product, you know, the basic units we are looking at glucose. Okay, so then I'm, I might know as it should be the um, end product for proteins. All right, then we have sucrose. That is, of course, the higher form of the complex form of glucose. All right, so uh, the correct option is option C for glucose. Number 33, okay, so the sum total of all observable features, so what you can observe, observable features of an organism, that is your phenotype, all right, so um, we are looking at some height, you know, color and the likes, and of course it's influenced by both genetics, you know, and the environmental factors, okay, so when you look at the word um, heterozygous, Heterozygous. Let me just give you an instance, you know, when you have probably for a particular trait. So let me say for, um, let me say for color yellow in a particular plant. So, you know, you have, when you have um, different um, representations, so when you have capital Y, you know, for dominance gene and um, small Y, you know, for recessive. So you can see that's heterozygous. Then when you have maybe capital Y, capital Y, that is homozygous, that is the same thing. Then, uh, or small y, small y, you can see that representation. So, um, genotype, okay, you can see genotype is quite um, different from your phenotype, all right? So, uh, this is makeup, genetic makeup, then this is phenotype, what we can see, all right, what we can observe. So, the correct option is option A for phenotype. Question 34 Pendate plan of the forelimb of frog, okay, that's an amphibian of bird, we're looking at the harvest. Um, we have of us, right? We have of whale and man is a proof of what? Okay, so that is evolution. You know, when you now go deeper into evolution, you're looking at the concept of divergent and convergent evolution. All right, so the correct option here is actually B for evolution. Uh, when you look at um, spontaneous generation, you know, that's actually a kind of postulation or theory uh, that talks about um, the facts or the concept that living things, right? They actually originate from non-living things. Okay, so there we have um, creation. So of course, that is just a basically grammatic in nature. Then we have locomotion that is talking about movement. So it has little or less to do with the concepts being. So we are looking at the plan, you know. So that is evolution. So option B is the correct option. Thirty-five. The under secretion of tyrosine in children's results in what? All right, that results in what we can also refer to as um, congenital hypothyroidism, all right, or cretinism, all right, especially in newborns. Okay, so this occurs due to under secretion of tyroxine. And you can see certain um, evidences or conditions like stunted growth, you know, physical deformities, and the like. So the correct option, of course, is D. When we look at goiter, goiter is actually caused by lack of iodine, you know, in diet. Okay, then gigantism, you know, over secretion of the growth hormone, basically. You know, kwashiorkor is lack of um, protein and other vital minerals and vitamins, you know, in diet. All right, so the correct option is option D for cretinism. Number 36. The petaloid sepals serve the function of what? Okay, so basically it protects the flower, you know, in the bud and um, it supports the petals when it's in bloom. All right, so basically we are looking at protective um, function. So the closest to what we can actually have is protecting the inner floral part of the flower. So option D, of course, is good to go. Question 37. The system of classification in which there are seven hierarchies from kingdom to species is introduced by Wu. That was by Carolus Nilius. All right, so this is the correct option. Uh, Felicio Jardine, you know, we can associate him with um, protozoans. You know, Chidosh one, we're talking about cell, then Charles Darwin, evolution. So the correct option is option B. Perhaps you have questions you'd like to ask. All you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the My School website. Right there, you get to ask your questions, and our solution providers are going to help you out with the moment. So why not ask those questions right now? So we have question 38. An adaptive feature of camel to the desert is what? All right, so it has the ability to tolerate high degree 
of dehydration. So the homes we are seeing at the back, all right, that actually serve as a fat reserve or energy reserve, so it can go a long while, you know, basically without water. So, and of course, other adaptive um, features like um, the lashes, you know, preventing dust, you know, from dust or sand particles from entering into its heart. So, the correct option is option D for ability to tolerate high degree of dehydration. Please, if you have solutions or explanations you'd like to share, we have so much interesting and attentive. All you just need to do is to use the comment section below, indicate the question number and the solutions you'd like to share. 39. The path labeled 2 is what? So at first, um, I just want us to identify this diagram. I know, even though we don't really have much of clarity, right? This is a typical vovox, right? Okay. Um, so we can see the path labeled 2. So from here, I can just tell you that that is your cytoplasmic um, strand for cytoplasmic connection. So for the sake of this presentation, the right option is cytoplasmic um, connection. The flagella, they are the ones used for movement, which you see like edge strands outside the cell. So we have it very well. Outside the structure, rather, we have it here. So option B is the right option. Question 40. The organism above is what? So um, this organism is actually a colony of vovots. All right. So when you talk about simple multicellular organisms, we are looking at um, some that exist as filament. Example, your spirogyra. Okay. Then some that exist in colony. That is your vovox. So this is a vovox, of course. So Chlamydomonas is a unicellular organism. It is autotrophic in nature. So we have Uglena, then we have um, algae. So the correct option is option um, C for vovox. So of course, um, the individual organism cannot move independently. So they come together in colony. And you can see several uh, flagella, you know, being present. So the correct option is option C. 41. The big structure of the organism is best adapted for what? So if you look at the beak, it is actually long and slender, right? And it's quite a pointy. So this allows it to be able to suck nectar. You know, the nectar is not really exposed to the outside. So it has to reach for the nectar. And as well, you know, to pick insects and feed to its young one. So uh, an example, it's a typical example should be your human bed, right? So we have option D. So this is for sucking nectar. So option D is good to go. Question number 42. One of the functions of water in seed germination. So look at that emphasis. Seed germination is to do what? It's actually to activate the enzymes, all right, to facilitate uh, the process of seed growth. So the correct option is option C to act activate the enzymes. So option C is the right option. Right there, we've come to the end of this video lesson, but there are definitely much more interesting content to come. All you just need to do is to always hit the like button for us, click on the subscribe button, and do not forget the bell notification for you to get informed immediately we upload the next video lesson just for you.